Welcome to Hope Today. Today is a day for you to receive hope, for you to receive the love of God. We're so glad you joined us here on the program. I'm Tom. I'm here with Angela and Sydney. Sydney, tell me about hope that people can expect today. Well, today, you know, we're going to talk about a very serious topic that is, you know, a buzzword right now in our culture, in our community, and even needs to be expressed in the church. You know, you may not realize it, but we all experience some level of childhood trauma, and sometimes it's crippling. And coming up on Hope Today, we're going to talk to counselor, pastor, and author Jay Otis Ledbetter about how to come out of it. We're going to discuss the symptoms of trauma, how to move past coping so you can start to flourish. You know, Angela, this is such an important conversation that it's important for us to get to the root of it so that we can walk and be healed and have that journey of freedom that God desires for our lives. Yeah, it is. It's a process. You know, our entire journey together in this through our trauma is a process, but there is hope for us today in the process. That's right. Well, it's good that the program's called Hope Today then, <laughs> and we're so glad you joined us. I just want to, we love when you write in. We love when you let us know that the program is hitting home and making a difference in your life. And I have to read this. This is from Nancy. Uh, she mentions that she loves watching uh, Move Your Mountain, which is a, another program that we have on Cornerstone. They take communion there. She really enjoys that. And she said this, I just love the new faces on Hope Today. CTVN has grown so much in the past 43 years. I am so grateful and uh, asked for prayer for her family. But she loves new faces. Uh, hey. Here's a new face <laughs> right here, Angela. And, uh, you know, I just want to take that opportunity um, to let you know that if you want to know more about our ministry, and I'm sure you do, you can get our Hope Today newsletter. Uh, this is free of charge. You can uh, just uh, call the number on your screen and they will, uh, you know, sign you up for this. And there is some great stuff in here. We've got always got an article. There's highlights, the whole schedule's in here. And there is an article with Angela and her family. <laughs> there it is, uh, you know, a great article about it. There's An Angela, you are preaching intense up there. Look at you, look at you. You look like you're gonna get somebody or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and there's a great picture of her family there, too. I don't know if you can show that, Larry. There it is. Look at that. What a wonderful family. That's great. And just uh, there's an update oh, on our dear friend Tom McGuff, uh, formerly uh, one of the hosts here. And also, if we go to the, the back, there is a wonderful recipe from Dashing Dish. And uh, so it is an important thing. It's, a, it's something that has a lot for you. And I would encourage you to call and sign up. You know, we're just so glad that you are tuned in to us today on Hope Today. And Angela, it is such a joy to have you part of the team. And, you know, one thing we love about doing here on Hope Today is we love creating a space to talk about conversations that are so needed right now in the body of Christ. You know, so many people are hurting. We know with the pandemic that there was so much pain that came out of it, so many things that came up to the surface. And so we just love to take these moments for you to talk and to speak to your spirit, to help you process things that you're walking through and you're going through. And as always, you know, we always have our prayer line that is open and available at 888-665-4483. Well, do you suspect you're still struggling and suffering from the effects of childhood trauma sometimes, no matter how large or small, and it's holding you back? Well, there's hope. Pastor, counselor, and author J. Otis Ledbetter proves that God definitely has his single out for you. He's written the book, Set Free, Released from the Damage of Trauma, to provide solid biblical examples and practical tips on how to cope. Otis, we are so glad that you're joining us today. Such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, Otis, I know trauma is a big buzzword right now that a lot of people are talking about, you know, in the world, mainstream culture, and even in the body of Christ. But before we dig in into the practical tips, can you define what trauma is to lay the groundwork for our conversation today? Thank you, Sydney, <clears throat> because that's exactly what we have to do. What is trauma? Um, trauma, everybody in our life uh, that, that I've ever met in their life has, has been wrongly accused, has been unfairly treated. And for some of us, those barbed memories have caused the swelling of resentment in our hearts. We've gone through events that have caused us um, to know not how to, we don't know how to react. The, the trauma from it is so overwhelming, we don't know how to react. Everybody's been through those. But trauma is not an event. And if, if we can come to the point where we understand what trauma is, then we can get through it and we can get healed from it, get whole from it, and begin to move on. But trauma is actually the chronic reaction to that event. Um, that's why three people can go through the same event 
and only one experienced trauma. Um, and so where, where we are today is we live in a world where the leaders are going from room to room, turning out the lights. And the spiritual darkness hanging over this nation is uh, it's creating a fearful, anxious, and an uncertain climate. And because of that, uh, people are on a daily basis living down the road. It's, it's like counselors say, you know, you have one traumatic event here, and you don't get over that. Another one will come later in your life. You don't get over that. Another one will come. And as a counselor, you have to move back into those what we call emotional flashpoints, and you have to deal with them one-on-one. -on -one. And yet those people are dealing with them, all of them, at the same time, and they don't know how to get out of it. And um, uh, so what I like to say is with our hearts swollen with the poison of Euro resentment, we've, we've kind of refused to let Christ pull the thorns. We're kind of like small children who cry about our pain to anybody who will listen to us, but we will not allow anybody to touch the sore. Wow. And we've chosen to respond to that traumatic event horizontally rather than vertically. And our focus is strictly on ourselves and the wrong that's done against us. And if we keep our mind that way, we will never move any further than the traumatic event. And we will experience trauma in our life ongoing. Odyssey and I just love how you're unpacking and helping, setting the groundwork of what trauma is because we hear it so often and what it is and we may think that we have trauma but not truly understand the deep nature of it. And I like what you said is like a lot of us are dealing with it horizontally but not vertically. So can we talk for a moment, what does it look like to vertically be dealing with your trauma and what are some of the symptoms of trauma? Because someone might be watching and be like, I don't, I don't even know if I'm really walking through this, but how are some of those symptoms of knowing like there's something going on here, my body is trying to speak to me what's happening? Well, I, I chose uh, the five most likely, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> five most likely things that will show up. And what will show up is fear. Now, I think that's the first thing. And to live with a fear is, uh, is uh, well, it's almost unbearable. And the fear, when you can't get over that, the next thing you're going to experience is anxiety. And the anxiety then leads to something that makes everybody leave you, and that's mood swings. You'll have uh, sometimes small, sometimes violent mood swings. People don't know what to expect when they come near you. The fear, the anxiety, and the mood swings, which will cause you to isolate. Isolate is the, is the ultimate. Uh, if, if you're out there and you are feeling right now, I need to isolate, I need to get away from everybody, I just need to be on my own, don't don't go there because isolation causes hopelessness, which causes desperation. And when you get through isolation, hopelessness, and desperation, the other end of it, Elijah tells us the other end of it is suicide. Elijah said when he isolated himself, you know, I'm no better than my, I'm no better than my ancestors. So God just take my life. He got under the broom tree. He was ready to die. And um, the beautiful thing is, uh, oh, and let me take one more step. After isolation, you'll go to lying. You'll live lies. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Alexander Solzhenitsyn coined the phrase, live by lies, don't live by lies. Uh, that is so true. Uh, the Apostle Peter, that's exactly what he did when he saw the first, well, the man he knew was Messiah, and he put his faith in, in him and he saw him walking away with the enemy, that traumatic event, he pulled his sword, he swung his sword, didn't get the head, didn't get the high priest, got the servant's high priest's ear. And then when he was by himself, everybody else ran away, he lied. He was with the enemy and we lie to create a safe place. We've got to have a place where we can be, where we're not touched. Um, and uh, the average teen today, when they're faced with living by lies and isolation, the only way they know to overcome it is through a chemical means. Isolate yourself so you can get out of the reach of the hateful uh, because there's a lot of hate in this world right now. Um, uh, and then that teen, when they can't do that, they'll live by a lie. And, and what are we seeing? That's what we're seeing today, trying to be what you're really not create a safe place around themselves, so 
fear, anxiety, mood swings, isolation, hopelessness, desperation, then just all comes in. And that's why we're seeing the amount of suicide we're seeing. You know, Odessa, just as you're explaining about sort of what the root of our trauma is and what we're walking through and going through and how these lies are created, one thing, can you break down, you talk about it, you touch about it in your book, is that there's overt and the subtle trauma that creates those lies, that creates those isolation, that manifests into these unhealthy patterns, these toxic patterns in our lives. Yeah, I think most of us uh, on the whole are, we've experienced a subtle trauma. Uh, maybe even the trauma of the unknown. Um, and when, when you hear somebody begin to talk about the I can't, I can't because, I can't go there because, I can't trust the Lord because, I can't do service because, the I can'ts are an indication that that person has subtle trauma that, because that's the, the next thing, I can't get you away from everybody else. And that's the trauma of the unknowns. And I kind of like, in the book, I kind of try to pull that where everybody can understand it. When I was seven year old, my buddy and I went through a haunted house, the first time we ever went to a haunted house. And the excitement of going through it was a traumatic thing alone because we had heard all kinds of stories about how you're gonna get uh, zombies and ghosts and all of that sort of thing are in there. And when we got through it, we realized on the other end that there were no zombies. Those were people we knew that were dressed up like zombies. There were no ghosts, ghoulish ghosts. And the blood that they saw was chocolate syrup. It wasn't real. So the next time we went through a haunted house, we were prepared for it. But that was sort of a subtle thing that got us prepared for the next time. Or uh, I think a better illustration is like the old uh, cartographers when they thought the world was flat, that the... the uh, explorers who were going to leave they didn't know if they were going to go off the end of the earth or not so areas that were unexplored the cartographers would write on the maps here be dragons here be fiery serpents and yet there were some explorers that would go into the unknown they would explore anyway and when they got there they found out there were no dragons they found out there were no fiery serpents they did find out there were a lot of problems and it was really difficult to go where they were going. And so what happens with the, with the overt trauma and the, and the uh, subtle trauma, the subtle trauma is sort of in the unknowns. When we're, we don't know what's going to happen if we go that direction, that really creates its own trauma. Um, and then uh, the overt trauma is oh, things like uh, physical harm, uh, uh, an abusive dad, an abusive spouse, uh, rape, um, all of those uh, horrible things that happen. Most of us aren't there. Most of us are in the subtle trauma, but the reaction is close to the same. It is an ongoing uh, chronic reaction, whether it's subtle or overt trauma, chronic reaction that keeps us from reaching our full potential or what God really wants us to be. And, and the whole idea of the book is to look at the characters in the Bible that Jesus dealt with and see that it can be overcome. Mary and Martha went from fear to faith. Job, anxiety to assurance. And so it, it, when I was um, teaching about this with my congregation, um, that was the, uh, the comfort. Somebody's already been there. They've already got through it. They've already been healed. So why can't I? You know, Otis is like talking about, I love that the Bible does point us to that other, you know, people in the Bible that they walked through trauma, they dealt with trauma. So what are some tips or what are some practical things that we can glean from the Bible, from the word of God to help us when it comes to walking through trauma? Because it truly is a process. It's a lifelong thing. I'm one of those, I'm in the overt category and experience certain things. So it does when it gets Sorry. deep down and just really, it's important to have the spiritual aspect when it comes to our healing and our journey. When deep Dealing with trauma. Yes, and let me say, uh, uh, before I get to that, what you said is it's, in, it's important to have the spiritual effect. But when I was writing this book and I was doing the research and the due diligence on it, 
I talk to uh, many um, educators, uh, and because I'm with Parenting Partners and we're, we run in those circles, um, they were good to talk with me about it. And Sydney, do you know every one of those educators, when talking about trauma-informed, only would talk about the social and the emotional, mm -hmm. the social and the emotional damage that was done. And after a little while, I heard the social, emotional, social, emotional. And I said to, to one of them, I said, well, it, it's a three-legged stool. There's another leg on that stool. You're sitting on a two-legged stool. And you know what they said to me? They said, yeah, it's government. I said, no, it's not government. It's spiritual. It's social, emotional, and spiritual. And if you leave the spiritual out, then you're leaving out one of the most critical steps that a person can ever come because we're spiritual beings. Um, and it doesn't really take a brain surgeon to figure that out. Uh, there is an afterlife. We know this is not all there is. God's put eternity in our hearts. We know this is just the staging for that eternity. And because they only talk about the emotional and the social, they're not going to get to the problem. They can't get down to the problem. You have to get to the answer, and the answer is spiritual. And, and so what we have to do, the first thing a person has to do is accept your situation as being from the Lord. That is the number one thing. Accept your, your situation as being from the Lord. Act on the offense and not the defense. And I go through and I talk about the negative thoughts that uh, flood into our minds. And we allow ourselves to live in the negative. And the Bible is the opposite of that. Paul said, whatever things are pure, whatever things are noble, whatever things are true, whatever things are a good report, these things. He, he went to the positive side. And if you're going to get out of the trauma, you're going to have to you're going to have to manage those negative emotions, not let them manage you. You manage them, and then you move positivity in, because, and and, and you need to have quality thoughts. Negativity does not bring in quality thoughts. Positivity brings quality thoughts, and that's what Paul was trying to do when he wrote that verse in Philippians to bring in quality thoughts. Quality thoughts are positivity's favorite food. And once they, once those, uh, those are there, you start thinking on there. Your life begins to change immediately because you're, you're, you don't think about the I can'ts anymore. You're thinking about the I can's and this can happen to me. It, it was like Job, when I went through Job, the first three chapters are nothing but trauma. I mean, death, destruction, loss, a trauma. The next uh, 37 chapter, 27 chapters are him looking for the answers. And you see what he was looking at. He went from, he went from um, uh, anxiety to uh, anguish. His three friends, that's what they call it. They, they said, we've seen Joe's anguish and it is deep. And then he went to arguing from with God and with his friends, he went to arguing and then he looked for answers and then he got assurance. And so there's a pathway from and out of those uh, emotions that trauma creates. If you want out of anxiety, if you look at Job, he went from anxiety to anguish, didn't resolve right away, to arguing, didn't resolve right away, and to answers and then to assurance. And so there will be a pathway for everybody who's been in, who's had a traumatic event happen to them, and particularly for those who are chronically reacting to that traumatic event. There is a pathway. It won't be the same as Job's, but it won't be dissimilar either uh, on your way out. I love what you're just explaining, Otis, is just the pathway, because that is a big thing. It's just like changing the way that we think and we process and we go through it. It will re-navigate our life. I know that's been something that's so true in my life, and I know for some that are out there right now that maybe it's just it's changing our thought patterns, but it's so important to have people to help us along the way. And so, Otis, can you just speak to that person right now that's been listening? They're like, I am dealing with these chronic thought patterns. I need help. What would you say to them? What are the steps that they need to take towards our pathway of healing today? 
Well, first of all, I would say to them, I wish it hadn't happened to you. And I'm sorry that in your life you have experienced that. Um, um, and if I had a magic wand, if there was some way I could wave it over you and get rid of that, I would do it in a heartbeat. And there actually is a magic wand. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's the cross. Um, it's the cross of Christ. It heals everything. But in it, I, I, and near the end of the book, I love this part because I love comebacks. I, I love sports. And I love to see somebody who, who is down and it looks like they're not going to even place. And yet they wind up winning. And I talk about my favorite one is Dave Waddle. And probably there's hardly anybody old enough that's listening today that remember Dave Waddle in the Olympics. He's the runner that wore the baseball cap. And uh, before they outlawed that, and he was so behind. And yet uh, he won the Olympic gold in that race when he was so far behind the whole, the whole pack. I like comebacks. And I, I like to think of the, uh, the guy on the football team who, you know, it's three seconds left. It's 31 to 30. His team's losing. He's the kicker. Okay. He, he is trusted to make his team win. He goes out for a 40-yard field goal. He kicks it and he misses. It goes to the left. It's over his team loses he falls to the to the turf grabs his helmet in his hands and he lives with that for a year for a year and he sees it Sydney over and over in his mind and if anybody's ever experienced a trauma especially one of the overt traumas they see that over and over in their mind they relive that like an instant replay they hope this time there'll be a different outcome but replay is always the same. It never changes. Don't bet on a replay that it'll change. That ball for that, that kicker will always go to the left, and it will always be uh, outside the goalpost. And yet next year, there's another season. He can prove himself. He's got a chance to prove himself. He's got, him ch he's got a chance to make a comeback. And at the end of the book, I write a lot of things about uh, making a comeback. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen people come back from trauma. I've seen people be totally healed. And if I could, I would have brought one lady today who the overt trauma is just incredible. And you could meet her. Yeah. Uh, she was down to leaving her husband and her family and headed to the homeless camp. Uh, she didn't feel like there was anything for her. And when she made her come back uh well today in the in the church uh, she's one of the best ministers we have in the church but make a comeback and i and i wrote these things and if and if you'll forgive me i, I kind of want to take the book here and i, I want to talk about these comebacks that the destructive behavior there's there is destructive behavior the destructive behavior is in order to accommodate fear stay actively panicked why won't people get rid of the fear? Why won't people get rid of the anxiety, get rid of it? It's because we're comfortable in it. And I liken that to the children of Israel. When they finally got from under the boot heel of the Pharaoh in the Egyptian army, and they were free, and things didn't go their way, what did they want? They wanted to go back into slavery. Why would they want to go back into slavery? The reason is because it wasn't comfortable. A lot of people say they were comfortable with their pain. No, they weren't comfortable with their pain. They knew the rules back there. They knew how to navigate the pain and they knew how to live with it. And so because this is new to them, the comeback is new. They'll want to go back to that because they know the rules. There, there are new rules toward the promised land. And you've got, to, you've got to live those new rules in order to not long for the old rules. You've got to learn how to navigate. So in those comebacks, the destructive behavior says, when you feel anxious, don't fight it, just let it be. 
No, that you, you don't. The comeback is when you feel anxious, you do whatever you can to make it go away. And there are things you can do, you know, if they tell you, if you lower your breathing to only six breaths a minute, you can't have an anxiety attack. Six breaths, if you find out things like that and you make them go away for destructive behavior says, coddle indecision and embrace mood swings. (laughs) No, you don't. Wavering is intolerable. You just won't do that. And thank so, you, thank you so, so much. Things. We are running out of time with everything oh, that you're I'm pouring so into. So this is so good. <laughs> and we just declare and decree it is the year of comeback and all that you shared in your wisdom. Thank you so much, Otis, for joining us. And his book is Set Free, Release from the Damage of Trauma. Thank you, Otis, so much for your heart, your well, ministry, you. and your wisdom and insight. God bless you. Oh, God bless you, too. Boy, what a great discussion. And, you know, Sydney, one of the things is it should be easier for Christians to be the people that acknowledge these things. And a lot of times we're the people that hide them the most, you know, the ones that we're, we, we feel like we got to be right. Don't yes. we feel like we got to be the religious people and, and we got to have it all together? Be willing to be open, be willing to acknowledge your pain. You know, I think that it was really important that he pointed out in Job that the a tenth, basically, of the book of Job is focused on the pain and the anguish he suffered. But the last portion, the majority of it, was walking through the process of discovering and resolving that pain. You can only get there if you go vertical. Trust in the Lord and know that there is hope for you today, even in the midst of your pain, your processing, and your discovery. And there is another side. There's another side to your trauma. I am living proof of it. I remember having like thoughts and flashbacks and just different things. So if that is you today, just know there's the other side with Christ, with help, with therapy. You can do it. You can live the life that God has always called you to live today. Amen. Amen to that. God has that for you. He wants that for you. This is not an intellectual exercise. It's freedom in Christ. You can have that today. Seek God. Seek help. God has good things for you. On tomorrow's Hope Today, ever struggle to make sense of the difficult season you're walking in? Speaker and author Joelle Malm helps you see above the struggles in your life and reminds you that God really is working all things together for your good. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.